welcome if you're new. I don't know what's happening to the footage right now. Everything froze up on me. There we go. All right. Well, I'm, I'm apparently losing my mind. Hi. <laughs> so I'm Stacy. Welcome to the channel. Welcome. If you're new, I am having a day. This is my second time trying to record this voiceover, so a little frustration happening. I am um, doing a frog four of four. This is the last fun Fun Friday colored pencil piece frog that we're going to do um, on this paper. And we might do more frogs in the future, who knows. But for this little four series um, of frog colored pencil pieces on this Canson sand grain mixed media paper, um, I have learned that I don't want to do colored pencil on this paper anymore. It, um, I do like the pieces I've done so far, but I, it's not ideal for colored pencil for me. Um, too textured. Lesson learned, right? Uh, but I wanted to stay to, true to my commitment and finish up the last piece. I already had it all sketched out and ready to go um, and scheduled, so I might as well, you know, put my best foot forward. Um, I start with blocking in a yellow. Uh, again, I'm using my... Castle Arts colored pencils. I have the 72 set of regular colored pencils, the metallics, and the tints, which is a pretty rounded out set of colored pencils. I do know that um, after using these, I would like to invest in either the Derwent Chroma Flows or the Derwent Ink Tense colored pencils. Um, maybe for Christmas this year, I'll get them for myself. Um, but I definitely want them. I feel like they're um, going to fulfill the desire to create um, the colored pencil pieces I see in my head, right? Large dreams. Uh, I had to block in the, the brighter oranges and the yellow on, or green on yellow on the frog. And... Um, just layering, layering, going over um, with a little bit of black to pop in some shading. I quickly decide I don't really care for black for shading. Um, don't really have exactly the right blue, so I'm making it up as I go. I pop in kind of a aqua blue. I didn't realize it was going to be quite so... It's not quite bright, um, but I rolled with it. Uh, decided to go over it with a little bit darker blue and see if that helped out with um, bringing it to the shade that I needed. Um, didn't feel like that eye was popping quite quite enough, so I decided to put a little actual red in it. A little bit of Prussian blue for shadows. Um, I find using either a dark blue or a dark purple to be what I prefer. Um, to put in the shadows on a piece. Now I'm going to go in, go ahead and uh, block in all of the the green stripes of the leaf. Um, it, it, you know, lends itself to looking stripey. And actually, the, the little fronds are slightly overlayering one another, and they each have a little bit of a white shine on each ridge. And they're pretty textured, so I was trying to convey that as well that the line texture on each leaf going downwards. So I keep all my, my marks um, going in an up and down fashion on the leaves and really get those all blocked in. Um, it is summer, so the window's open. I just had the dishwasher running. So if you heard that noise in the background, I apologize. Um, I had to move my setup out into the living room area for the summer, so. And it's summer, the windows are open until the AC is on. So we're going to have a little bit of road noise in some of my videos. Um, I blocked in the shadow of his leg and it, his bottom. And then I'm, I'm going to go in and just try to quickly block in that the dark green. And do a gradient of, of dark on, 
on the left hand edge of each stripe and then go lighter, get lighter as I move to the right of each stripe. So that it hopefully feels like these little fronds, I guess they would be, of each section of the leaf um, look like they're layering over one, one another. Then I go over the top of the, the dark green with a lighter green, and then I go over the lighter green with a yellow um, to try to get that yellow-green effect on the leaves without obliterating that white shine on the edge of each leaf. Just getting in some textures in the background. I didn't want to forget which direction I needed my textures to be going in in the background. Um, line direction matters quite a lot, especially in colored pencil, I feel, because it, it's much more visible with a colored pencil piece, I feel. Um, <clears throat> I mean, you can't go super slow and work in small circles, and you won't get those, you know, direction lines. But um, I was really feeling that this, you know, this is the last piece. I want to get it done. Um, I would like to move on to other projects and other mediums for Fun Friday. And I did commit to doing four frogs. So um, this is numero four. Get it done. Uh, the only white you'll see me use that's not, this is the Castle Arts white, but I also do sharpen and pop in with my Prismacolor white colored pencil because that's my favorite white colored pencil. I have tried them all, you guys. I have bought every white colored pencil I could get my hands on and compared them to the Prismacolor colored pencil. The vibrancy and the coverage that you get with a Prismacolor white is just, there's no replacing that, right? Unless you want to use bleed proof white which is a possibility, but I was afraid that the bleed proof white on top of these colored pencils might not stick forever, might pop off. Um, I didn't want to have to worry about that. Here I'm going in back and forth with the, the light green and the light yellow um, over the top of that dark green, just blocking it all in. Um, because I was working a little quickly I didn't fill in the tooth of the paper quite as much as I wanted to with the colored pencils. So later on, I'm going to um, blend this out with my, my colored pencil, pencil blending medium. Um, that stuff is just a dream and uh, a lifesaver if you're a colored pencil artist and you need to block in or smooth out or um, blend a section, like a large section like this leaf. <coughs> I mean, I took, I think, two and a half hours to do this entire piece, something close to that. Each piece took roughly over, a little over two hours to do, which isn't bad. Also, the reason why I worked small is because I knew with big color pencil pieces that it would take some time to get them done, and if I worked really big, it would take even more time. <laughs> Um, popping over on him with some more yellow and green to make him more vibrant and more luscious looking. I didn't want to use blending medium on him at all. I wanted to, to be strictly colored pencil. Um, I wanted a bit of texture on him, but also I wanted him to feel shiny because frogs are they're shiny, you guys. I don't know why. They just are. And I go in with the Prussian blue on the edges of the other blue just to give it some interest and some pop and to darken some of the fold lines and the shadowy areas on his limbs. Get in around that eye and the seat of that mouth. Then I lost my bright yellow around his blue spots and tried to put it in and it started turning green so I put the pencil down and it's just letting it be what it is. And now I'm going in with Prussian Blue, which is my favorite color pencil blue, um, for the, all the shadows. Remembering to not cover the white completely, the little white glow, and lose that feeling of layering. But I do feel like the shadows really made him feel more 3D and pop off the page a little bit. Um, I think the shadows are my favorite part of the piece. <laughs> 
Oh. They were fun to do. We got all done, and I was like, ooh, yeah, there we go. Now he looks like he's on the leaf. So satisfying. And then, uh, oh, what do I do next? Oh, I go over the Prussian because I felt like the shadows were just a bit too bold. So I'm going over all that Prussian blue shadows with the a blue-gray color to kind of flatten them a little bit. And I fluctuate here. I was going to pop in white colored pencil and then I thought, no, wait, let's do our blending solution first. And then we can see what we need to do from there. So I'm taking the blending solution and a Filbert Snap uh, brush. It's one of my favorite brushes that I have. I got it in a, um, an art box. And I just use the blending solution to kind of soften and mist out that background a little bit, um, make it less in focus, but still keep the vague texture of leaves um, right there. You see me trying to move the colored pencil around with the blending solution to create those that stripey feel. And I feel like it, it worked out all right. He does kind of blend in a little bit with the background, which is not ideal, but I mean, He's a frog. He's supposed to blend in with his background. And now I'm doing all these little individual stripey areas and trying to remember not to blend too much. Just enough to try to get rid of some of the sparkle in, of the cream paper coming through. All those layers of colored pencil. So it looks more solid. And this blending solution is a dream, you guys. It is a lifesaver if you have areas like this that you want to quickly blend and so you can move on to other things. Um, I, I really enjoy it. Also an art box find. I would have never thought to buy a blending solution for colored pencils and this is a lot of fun. Um, the art box that I was getting that I'm pretty sure this stuff these items came in is the uh, palette packs box. It's my favorite art box. And then we're just going to touch up the eye and brighten up some areas on his his little self to make him pop a little bit. Make him feel more 3D and shiny because frogs are shiny. They have a kind of glisten to them. Then pop in a few more shadows. Darken up. Outline without outlining. <laughs> that was my thought there. And then I feel like I lost a little bit of my orange when I was blending, so I'm going back over those spots. I'm trying to brighten up that eye and make it look a little more bold. And then we're pretty close to done. Um, yeah, we're going to take off our tape, do a little close-up shot. I do struggle getting this tape off because I clip my main fingernails. Um, but overall, I like the piece, and I like my nice clean edges on a, on a finished piece. I, I just enjoy that so much. One of the most satisfying parts of creating an art piece is the, the nice crisp border. <laughs> but there we go. There's our green frog, our red-eyed tree frog. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Here's all of our supplies. Let's zoom out real quick so you can see everything. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!